Welcome back to The Real Coffee Talk with Tina Drake and myself, Debbie Crawford. We're so excited that we're back for the year 2020. So and excited. Can you all believe it's 2020? Woo. Woo! You know, I heard somebody the other day, they said, we were waiting for the Jetsons stuff. But oh. they don't realize there are cars that you pull up to the airport and you flip out the wings and you sure. lock them and you take off. Well, you think about it. We have phones everywhere now. I don't even think the Jetsons had that, did they? I don't remember. I'll have to watch I don't it. either. I'm going to have to watch an episode. Well, we have lots of Jetsons stuff <laughs> yeah. already. Are you kidding? I know. Our kids are taking you programs on computers. The next time we do a show, let's bring in the things that the Jetsons had that we have. Oh, we will do that. And maybe yes. some of the Back to the Future stuff. Uh -huh. Well, that'd be fun. Yeah, We'd have a lot so. of fun with that. So, well, we're going to tell you all what's up with us, what's new. And I'm going to let Tina go first because she's got some really cool stuff going on. I don't know. I have a lot of stuff going on, but she does too. <laughs> well, let's see. I left one job, <laughs> went to a new job, and I do have a lot of great things. I have a great class of 7th graders. They are the class of 2025. I know. Isn't that I was adding it up the other day to talk to them, and I was like, Wait a minute. Yeah, no. You guys are the class of 2025, and that's amazing. And to see them grow and how they're learning, it's it's just been fun. It's oh. been a lot of fun. And, and I'm going to tell you, I hear from some of the kids and their parents, and, and they are so excited that she's back. She we makes, have so much fun together. Well, you make learning fun. You, I enjoy it. You enjoy it, and you're creative. Mm -hmm. You don't just walk in and say, okay, we're going to do multiplication today. You no, know, you get all excited, bubbly, and your hands are going everywhere. So it's oh, the kids are you. very fortunate for having you. I appreciate that. But I'm having a great deal yes. of fun, and they're having a great deal of fun. And I love to see them go from the beginning to where, you know, they really didn't know what was going on and what to expect from us, and now to watch them grow. And they're, yeah. well, I know, we need to do this. And it's just been it's just been fun. It's been oh, interesting, wow. and I wake up every morning excited to go to school, and that's kind of nice. Oh, wow. That Not that so I didn't cool. like my job before, because I made some great friends. I've actually, you did? I have. I've heard from several of my friends, and we have a great new solid waste coordinator in Trimble yeah, County. Yeah, she's amazing. Mickey is fabulous, and I love working with her, so it's been a great just great life. <laughs> oh, wow. That is so cool. Well, with me, I'm, mine's all to do with work. <laughs> oh, she works all the time. We've talked about this. But I love yeah. it. I love this because people don't know things that, like legislation. We've got a new show called mm -hmm. Legislation. We, um, Joe DeVito is going to be coming in also and doing some different things. We've got, um, I don't know, there's like four new shows that are going to be coming on. So that is, I'm just pumped about those. But the legislation one, I'm really excited about because a lot of times we don't know what's coming through the legislation. Right. And of course with Indiana, we have uh, Randy Fry coming in. He's going to come in once a week, tell us what's coming up, and then tell us what happened the week before, how they voted oh. and everything, and then what you can do. So that's a big... What can we do? We've talked about this and so talked cool. about this. Because it is interesting, over the years, it has changed quite a bit. Right. Because I know when I first started into, you know, adulthood and understanding what was going on, you know, then we always made phone calls and we wrote letters. So tell us about that process and has it changed? And if it has changed, what well, can we do? It hasn't really changed a lot. The main thing is if you disagree with a bill that's coming up, if there's something in it you don't like, or if there's a, a say a committee on local government is meeting and you see an agenda and you're like, oh, I really don't like that, that's going to happen. It's fine not to like what they're doing. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But the issue is when you call and say, I don't like that bill, or I don't like what you're going to do in that meeting. Okay, you don't, but what else, what other options do they have? Right. If they don't have an option and they don't have a plan that's different than what they already have on the agenda or in the legislation, they're probably going to go with what they have. So when you call, Please, please give them a plan. What are your thoughts? How can right. it be different? How can there be an amendment done to whatever is, is coming up or anything? Just call with a plan and say, have you thought about doing this? 
Or so, so, you can also say a solution. A yeah, solution. You know, yeah. I don't like this because I always talk about in science yes. evidence. Yes. What is your evidence? What is what? Why are you calling? And yes, you know, I know that. I don't know if this is still true, but since you're working on this, I'm going to make this kind of a question oh, in okay. a statement. I'll try. But I know that one time I spoke with um, a recent. It was a past governor, and he said it was kind of comical that today's time people don't make those phone calls that they tend to want to be a more of an email or a Facebook but they actually get more done is this correct I mean they would actually maybe get more accomplished if they called with a solution yes to definitely. the issue definitely a plan yes what do you want corrected instead of just saying I don't like it right you know, I don't like that but why why right. are you saying that and then make that phone call because yes. they really do need to, the phones don't ring now this was the governor that said this said the phones don't ring like they did right way back when which is silly because if you're posting it all over social media that you don't like it but the legislators don't see that they're in they're in session they are in there looking at their agenda and they're going over things and they go home and they go to sleep because it's intense right. really no, intense. we kind of went through that a little bit yes. when I was working in um, solid waste. yes we would say we don't see all of those Facebook posts. when you no. are talking about dealing with hundreds <laughs> of people I mean you <laughs> might get one message to go through or maybe somebody right. flags you over and over again right but really, I never had time uh, to sit and no. field every statement. You're working. Right. So, but if they make that phone call or send directly an email. Directly to there. Okay. Yes, directly to them or to the state house or to the government entity that you're disagreeing with. If you send them, I don't like this because of. And it, it includes your evidence. So yes. your steps are, yes. make the phone call. Or can, email. Or email. Yes. And then explain. So this bill, another thing is like that, Just it, not just in legislation, but yeah. in life. I mean, many people want to have a complaint, but don't want to tell how we can fix that. Right. So and that's what you're saying. My grandmother always told me, you have no right to complain unless you are putting input as to how to fix it. So I think if we remember that before we pick up that phone, what's my plan right what do I know that could be done differently to make that work maybe a little better than what it is now so it, don't don't dismiss your idea your no, idea no your idea is important yes because it they may take a part of your idea and a part of somebody else's and put it together now they got what they need or they may take all of yours or they may stay with what they have mm -hmm. but they need that input from you right. to make a better educated decision so you know you think about it just 20 years ago i can remember getting a phone call it's uh, kind of dating us a little bit yeah. <laughs> whoops <laughs> 20 years ago I can remember getting a you know a phone call from someone says call your legislation this yes. is what and we made things happen yes and I remember that and that hasn't happened in quite some time as far as a yeah, big, not that I know of. you know as far as a big push right. and, and all of us were together I mean right. I know that the teachers last year but then it was still more of a physical right rather than these steps so yes make sure you take these steps right. and you do have an opinion and yeah and you can go on the uh, legislator site you know the state house in, in Indiana or Kentucky and you can see all the bills that are coming up in the house to be voted on and then you can read them now that's really important is to read them right because you may not know they tack things on don't yeah, they? They, they do I did know that I did <laughs> I remember it, this it can be something silly like let's say um, let's say they're gonna make some big bill about driving your car on the left side of the road instead of the right or something and then there's a little thing in there that says that somebody in some county is going to get $150,000 for some mm -hmm. type of research they're going to do <laughs> you think it, it's silly well it right. probably is a little silly maybe may not be so you want to read it all don't mm -hmm. you know and you, then remember too the legislators have to look at that bill and go the bill's really important this is a major thing we need to do and take care of but there's this silly little addition right. in there. so is the bill important enough to let this go through with it right. and sometimes they have to choose whether to let it go through or not and there are things that are so important that they sometimes go we well, gotta do that yeah 
That's so interesting. So. But there's you have the right. Yes. You have the right to state your opinion. We yes. are not we want you to do that. That's what we're talking about is encouraging oh. you be a part of so what important. laws are being made, what bills are being presented in all of that and you yeah. have that right just make the phone call and make sure you have a plan before you call. Yes. Don't just yeah. call up your legislatures and <laughs> waste their time say I just don't like that okay then what do you not like and why and what how can they fix it or, right you know sometimes there's more than one way to do something and maybe your plan is similar to theirs but it's just going around a little different way like maybe right. it's a road maybe they're gonna put in a road somewhere and they want to put it in from plan you know from city B to city A but you're going oh no it'd be short if they went from city B to C and then back to A and it would be shorter distance well maybe they didn't think about that so that is so interesting. Okay. I didn't know she was starting a new legislation show. I didn't yeah. know that. Well, we've been doing it for a while, for several months. We've been doing little tidbits, you know, oh. putting out things out there. But we were waiting for the for the actual um, session to start, so that we could say, okay, here's the bills. These are what's coming up this week, and then next week. That, plus, that gives you time to call. Sure. Before it gives the, you time to think and process right. and look it up. And then the next week we cover. This is what we talked about last week. Okay. And this is where it went. This one did and this one didn't or this one had an amendment or whatever. And then now next week we have this coming up. That so that'll be fun. I think so. I mean, I am really excited about it. I, I mean, keep it open and keep yeah. it out there. And, and I wish we had more legislators that could come in and do that, but we, we don't. You know, we don't have anybody from Kentucky yet, which would be amazing, Kentucky. If you could send us a legislator once a week or so, it'd be great. But if so. you know of anybody, it's somebody in your family that would love to come and yeah. record, that would be great. Yeah. We'd love to have them. As long as you have a plan. <laughs> have a plan. <laughs> And be sure to bring all your stuff that you want to talk about. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, Moving on to yes. our grandparents' corner, and I'm still not in the grandparents. No. I do have grand dogs, yes. and they are precious. But let's move on to some of the things that we can teach our grandparents. Well, Grand, but no, no, take that back. We're teaching our grandchildren. Children. <laughs> yeah. So as a grandparent, you can play an, a special role in your grandchildren's life. Right. You know, sometimes parents don't have time to sit down and talk about certain things and because they're busy doing it, all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. But have you ever thought about going for a walk with your grandchildren and saying, do you know how to buy a house? This is the process you would do to buy a house. And this is what happens when you buy a house. This is how you start. This is where you go. This, you know, this is the paperwork. So you have to do this or that. You'll have to have this, these documents to first go. So they don't know this. And then sometimes they don't know what to do after they buy the house. And Miss Tina's got a story for you that I'm actually not jumping out of my chair to tell this oh, yet. Yes. Because she's this good. is kind of funny, okay? Well, but you have to remember sometimes grand sometimes children, whether they're grandchildren or children, they're not told what can happen or what's going to go on. But if, if nobody ever tells them, you can't expect them to know it. It's not their exactly. fault. Exactly. So well, this is the funniest story, and I'm kind of laughing at myself that I'm going to tell this to you guys. <clears throat> Here we go. I was about 21, and I was madly in love, and we had a cute little house, and it was wonderful. And my husband comes home one day and says, uh, Tina, we had this little card that came in the mail. And I said, okay what is this card and What's he it said for? it was a bill and I said okay again I'm still not sure what this is about and we're talking about April time so we'd been together a few months and everything was wonderful and he said it's a bill it's called a tax bill and usually at this time they were colored or whatever right and they still are but anyways and I said oh I think we got a couple of those I threw them away because there was no way that anybody could be charging us this $500 bill. And I don't know how much it was. It was several years ago. Because many years ago. In her mind, she'd already paid for the house. Yeah. Well, so she's done. Let me explain. In my mind, he, she's right. But in my but mind, I'm thinking the front door is broken. So where is the landlord? He has not come to fix it. Um, there's these people that keep sending me this card that say I need to go pay somebody $500 or more. I don't know what that's from. I pay my bills on time. So I did not know that you had a tax bill. No well, ever you can me. imagine as this went on, this became quite a bit of an argument. And my husband said, why did you not give me that bill? And I said, 
why would anybody charge you that and I just could not understand now please understand the reason that I didn't know this is because my mother and I had mostly rented so we had leased homes or right. we had traveled and moved even though my family had owned farms right I was never around to pay the tax bill at Christmas time yeah. but you understood rental you I did I there understood was a maintenance van you right. understand? Yeah. So that type why of in the world would you pay an extra fee if you didn't have the maintenance man and you didn't have the extra, um, you know, the extra amenities like a swimming pool? Right. I don't know. So, anyways, it did get to be kind of a funny joke because at the very end of the argument, right when he was storming out, I said, "Well, if you're going to pay that bill, who's going to fix the door?" <laughs> He still is like, you don't get it. We are the landlords. We are the taxpayers. We are the people that pay the, we pay the bills. And I said, oh, okay. So the immoral of the story is when you buy a house, you need to know that there are lots of extra bills. And one of those is a tax bill once yes. a year. Unless you put it in your mortgage. I've learned that since. But, but, but kids wouldn't know to do that. No. So when they go to buy a house, your children or grandchildren may end up in a mess. It, it is, and it is very And they shocking. don't know the points. They right. don't know there's points. So you need, you really need to talk to them. The first time you tell them all this stuff, they'll absorb part of it. Right. And then the, later on, they'll come to you and ask you, now, what was that about? Why would I do that? So about three or four times of telling them, they'll get it. And when they go to buy a house, they'll do it and do it right. Right. They won't get in a mess, hopefully. But... And there are, I mean, as an adult, you do learn things. And I, I was really young. I mean, I know 21 doesn't well, Megan, but I was very young. But I still, I think about it with our kids today. I mean, I look out over right. the junior high and I think, how many times do we ever teach them just a daily? I don't. You know, or or a lifetime thing. You're going to buy a house someday. Yes. If you're if you choose not to put those taxes in there, and here's where your taxes go. Right. Because after this argument, I will I will admit I'm always going to be a learner, and I went straight to the library and picked up a lot of government local government books and read. And where does my tax money go? And right. who's who am I paying for? I had no idea. You know, like your librarians yes. get that money, your teachers. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was a great learning experience. Uh, yes. But I think it's wonderful for kids to know that as they're growing up because sure. they don't have to go get all the books like you had to do. Right. Because they already have that information or they may ask to where to get more information. Right. But it's just anything, buying a car or... Exactly. You know. You have taxes on a car. I mean, yeah. you have down payments. Yes. Well, I just want to sell a car. How do right. you sell a car? So... I just have learned over time as an adult, you know, there are so many little things yes. that are just life lessons. Yeah. And our grandparents, you know. Yes. I mean, my grandmother, she laughed and laughed and laughed at that story. <laughs> I, I <laughs> she think thought that was so funny. She said, you didn't pay the taxes on your property? I was like, no. Right. Why would I do that? She said, well, to keep your house. <laughs> yeah. And it's really, Eric, you are a special person. <laughs> he is so patient when she doesn't know how to do something. He never, I don't know that he ever so, really gets. He did yell at me that time, but it was also because it was scary to yes. him. You know, because by April, most of you already are watching this know, by April, you've got that bill and they're saying they're putting your name in the paper right. and all this. And I was like, why would they do that? We pay our bills. <laughs> She pays all of them now, even the taxes. It was so. all, yeah, we're all good on that. Yep, yeah. So she does that. So now you're going to give us something about live love. Oh, I am. Which is actually can be tied in with all of this. Yes. It is probably, it is my very favorite lesson that I've ever taught. So when we first started school with seventh grade, I had normally or previously taught eighth grade. Oh, yeah. And I had taught elementary school, but I hadn't taught the seventh graders. And it Trimble County, they are the new students. They're the first ones coming in. So somebody mentioned to me when I was out in California, they said, oh my goodness, have you started the mindful moments? And I said, well, what is that? I know what that is. And I started researching, right. and there are something like 7,000 students uh -huh. so far in Kentucky that are already incorporating these. Yes. And so we incorporate mindful moments. And I spoke with the kids, and I explained to them that this is just a reset. This is just that moment. Yes. 
it has been amazing to watch me especially even to watch them if they get into a pinch or they get into a time of a game and they'll come in the next day and say I took a mindful moment last night and it all it is is breathing and yeah. it's just kind of listening to your mind and we set the timers two minutes of their class right. it's the beginning of every class but we actually take lessons and I'll take some time and just stop and say well, what do you think about this and right. then focus your energy on this it's amazing because I've seen some students truly yes. learn how to incorporate those mindful moments yeah and you know we did a study we actually we didn't do the study but we heard about that if you have kids say three things three positive things every day within the 21 days their thought process changes instead of them searching for the bad things they start searching out the good things and then they'll tell you well you know so and so did this yesterday it was so cool what's on but they forgot about the bad thing that happened so if you teach them to take a mindful moment and mm -hmm. every day choose three things that were really good that day what what happened one you woke up obviously that's a good one and some kids say well I found my tennis shoes this morning or mm -hmm. you know as long as it's three every day for 21 days now their thought process changed that's awesome so, yeah I knew so the 21 days we, during the mentoring yes we tested that and let me tell you it works it really works so parents grandparents whoever I don't care who you are if you got kids around you a teacher three things every day and you'll see those kids change and we've incorporated multiple yes. situations such as that but truly the beginning of it was just breathing and yes. all they had to do was focus on their breath and their yes. exhale set that timer you wouldn't believe how long two minutes is oh it is it's a long time it is a long time and so in the beginning we were like fidgety and now you can come into my room yes. literally first two minutes is just silent but you know the kids are all running from this to that to this to that and they don't take that time to sit down and and actually think what happened yesterday what's happening right what now? is my intention what's gonna happen later what's right. my agenda where you know so it's they, been fun they need that and it has been very cobwebby cleaning right. out your cobwebs in your brain yeah. because I know when I take that mindful moment before we start class I know what my intentions are yes. and they know what their intentions are so that's our little segment for live love today we're gonna to be adding more we have an experiment yes. coming up and I'm not gonna tell you so that you'll watch for next time <laughs> but we have an experiment going on right now and it's all about the words that you speak from your beak yes so we'll see what happens and I'll be sure to bring the results when we get them to get, get them in that'll be awesome now we're gonna tell you some real fun things now we're gonna tell you about some national days and in, in the month of January there's some things you can look for go go onto your computer and look up national days right and some of them are really cool and some of them are kind of quirky <laughs> some of them were, one of them was do nothing day and that's in January I don't know what day it was but you I can look it that. up just so y'all know that is not my day now Debbie's one of her favorites just so you know it's National Bootlegger Day <laughs> yes, that was Debbie's that. favorite <laughs> <laughs> look at her National Bootlegger Day is on the 17th of January now I have to tell y'all why I like that one <laughs> look I knew she was gonna have to tell you I have, I have to you know back in several many many years ago my grandfather and my grandfather's brother-in-law which will make him my great uncle mm -hmm. they used to make moonshine and then they would they were moonshine runners and they were actually race car drivers so it was really kind of neat but now that I think about it all, I'm like oh my gosh I could have gotten in trouble because I'm a little kid and I'm in there stirring the stuff in the barrel, you know? so, <laughs> now the truth is out no, I know I know how to make elderberry wine and dandelion <laughs> wine and water so I know how to make those things and beer coming up next Kentucky Anna News Winery <laughs> <laughs> no probably not. No, not, not. it probably was a not. joke everybody but you know it's just kind of funny that you know my family actually were bootleggers but that is in the south down in Kentucky and that was just that was the normal way of life back then but sometimes it was yes so as a as a small child I can remember them doing it but you know and then they would take the cars and they would race on the racetrack in the south and they did pretty good but it was only because they were used to running <laughs> national so. bootlegger family here you know <laughs> I don't have any of those stories I don't know but then of course Abraham Lincoln is my 16th cousin so I mean I've got good and, and odd on it <laughs> so 
<laughs> Some of the we other know, ones. we all know, Miss Debbie is the most wonderful person. <laughs> She's not bootlegging, but she does oh, love no. the day. <laughs> she loves the day. Now, of yeah. course. My favorite day is going to be January 21st, and that's National Hug Day. Yes. Oh, watch out when she's coming. And with the Mindful Moments, mm -hmm. we have incorporated, uh, we don't hug everybody because not everybody likes hugs. That's I didn't just realize. right. I've learned that. That's just a learned lesson. Everybody does not like hugs. Yeah. So we try to find a replacement, and in those days, you just find a word that makes them happy. So, word or shake hands. Yeah, or shake pat hands. Pat them on the shoulder. Tell them know. it's just nice to see you today. Yeah. If you don't want to give a hug but if you would like a hug on National Hug Day on the 21st of January and give somebody a hug <laughs> she doesn't need the National Hug Day I'm gonna tell you no, I hug everybody. If her eyes are if open, she's gonna hug you. That's right. If I can't, <laughs> if you like them, I am learning yes. to be very, you know, if you don't like them, I get it. Well, there's some people, I, there's very few people that don't like a hug. You're right. There's some people that just, that that's their space. Right. And they, they don't, they can't handle something in their space. So just hug, so. tell them to hug themselves, you know, <laughs> give, them a, give them a big old hug, yeah. okay? You can hug yourself and it still feels just as good. Yeah, and then there's there's hot chocolate day. Oh yeah. And then what there's another one. There? Oh there's <laughs> wig day. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> I think it's like the last day of January. I'm not sure on the day, but there's National Wig Day. Yeah, and we we talked about we might buy a wig. Yeah. Most people don't realize I used to have hair down to my elbows and I had to have somebody do the perm. I, I couldn't reach it. remember. <laughs> she remembers. When I first met Miss Debbie, I'm just going to go ahead and slide this in there. <laughs> I used to walk around and play with her hair and say, she I did. wish my hair would look just like yours. I did. <laughs> did that. But she didn't know that I had it permed all the time. Yeah, I did. So. Know. But every, it still was beautiful. Was it every three is. or six months I had to have it permed? I don't know, but it was beautiful. I know. Still is beautiful. Oh, thank you. But, <laughs> but it was, she did have really long hair. <laughs> and it was difficult to take care of, let me tell you. So I ended up with a little Whatever. pixie cut. Now I'm Tinkerbell, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, now she just doesn't want to have to fool with it. Exactly. So she gets up, you know. She won't have to put her hair up like mine. No, yeah. <laughs> I have sticks. Um, you wear, when you have long hair, you can twirl it and then you put these sticks in your hair. And I probably have 10 or 12 of those sticks. Some of them are about this long and some of them are like that to put my hair up because I'm. Mean, Either that or use a pencil. I mean, I had a lot of brand really? new pencils that I just got stuck <laughs> in there. Put it up and go yeah, with exactly. it. She's like, I'm done. I don't feel like pulling with that. Oh, I did. It took I a did long have time. something new we wanted to add. Don't yes. forget, if you guys get a chance, look me up on Facebook. Yes. I have angel card readings. Yes, she it does. It is very fun. And for all of you that are worried about it not being Christian, I'm a Christian, okay? <laughs> I don't know why somebody asked me that, but I was like, what? Okay, I talk about all of that, but it's all in there. It's really fun. So you have to go to her website? Yeah. Well, no, you don't have a website yet. You have the Facebook. You have right, website? it's just on Facebook. Facebook. And yes. I have a YouTube under Tina Drake. Yeah. So just look me up. So I think my might be live love too but yes. you can find me I trust me just type on the internet and if not just keep coming back here we're gonna yeah. keep doing this there'll be more for here so <laughs> we're excited well we really appreciate our sponsors and as always we thank you for watching we love you so much continue to watch us we're gonna give you some more information yeah. and if hey if you have something you want us to research or look oh, at we yeah. love it we're lifetime learners. We'll look it up or we'll go find somebody and interview them yeah. and bring them in and That's where the legislation came from. Really? I'd had several questions about legislation and, you know, what did, how, how, well, they're not going to listen to us. Oh, yes, they are. So I went and found out and now we have somebody coming in to help explain that stuff. So that's exciting. Yeah. So come back and see us. Yeah. It may not be next time that we'll have results of our experiment. It's a shh secret. But when we get it, We'll bring it in and show it to you. You're going to like it. I hope you'll do it at home. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, really fun. There you go. Well, as always, we thank you for watching. <laughs>